question. Mm -hmm. um, similar thing, I guess. Um, I'm a graphic designer working for myself now since having children. The fear is losing relevance, not growing, not getting that feedback, and my work diminishing. What advice do you have for independent designers in this instance? So I think for me, the word that stood out right away is the fear. The fear is losing, the fear. And the reason why that had such a charge for me is because if you distill all human emotion down, there's only two, love and fear. That's it. And so the thing about fear is, you know, we are the stories we tell ourselves. So if I'm telling myself that something is fearful and threatening and likely to go rogue, that becomes reinforced as a truth. And I won't go into the whole neuroscience behind it, but it does shift our psychology. And equally, if we put our attention on a more positive story, the same is true there too. So what I would suggest is that there you're kind of working with two parts of yourself there. You're working with the part that is fearful and we want to start strengthening the part that is more self-serving. So I've got a couple of ideas as to how you might want to do that. Um, one is, of course, you might want to consider working with somebody like me. But if you want to work with yourself, you might just simply notice that fear voice when it when it cuts in. What's it saying? What's its narrative? What's its charge? Where do you feel it in your body? And and just stop. Ask yourself, is it true? Have I got evidence for that? And simultaneously, I'd really encourage you to start building up the more self-serving muscle. And that can be as simple as just each day stopping and looking at three things that you appreciate about yourself so that you're beginning to strengthen David and weaken Goliath because we all have a negativity bias. And if it, we leave our psychology to go rogue, you're going to go to the fear place. Mm -hmm. So um, really what I'm saying there is it's a very natural response. There's no shame in fear but we have to work with ourselves differently and recognize when it's a truth and when it's just a story. Excellent. So that's the kind of psychology side of things. Um, Sarah, how about like the professional piece when it comes to, you know, how do you make sure you're still part of the, the industry and get the, get what you need from it? Mm, I feel like that was a great answer, Katie. I feel like I really enjoyed that and took some notes myself. I was like, oh, this is so good. Um, I guess in terms of, you know, navigating it from a creative perspective, there's, you know, lots of different ways you can kind of still keep that relevance, like, you know, networking or, you know, having industry friends and just checking in or a passion project that you're doing on the side and sharing that with some friends. Um, I think that all of those can kind of help you keep your finger on the pulse. And then I guess in contrast to that, I, I almost would say as well, um, you know, having a step back from the industry can sometimes be good. Um, I guess it's about the relevance versus a new perspective. So maybe if you're in the same social circles and doing the same things, um, you will come up with similar ideas. So sometimes doing something completely different will give you a different perspective. So, you know, maybe I challenge you to, you know, Think, I'm trying to channel Katie here, really think the way that you're, you know, approaching that um, question as well. And, you know, what are you gaining from, you know, being independent and having more time with your family and what versus when you, you know, might have had a job in a more traditional sense? Yeah, excellent. That's really good. Um, okay. Sarah, we'll stick with...